Hi, this is Adam with Photo Energy University, and today I want to show you four ways on how to use white balance inside of Lightroom. Okay, before I show you how to fix white balance, it's probably important that you know what white balance is. And since I think this is a pretty boring topic of conversation, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on it, but I am going to touch on the basics. And the basics is that all light, no matter whether it's natural light or light from a lamp or a candle, all has a color temperature. And this is rated on what's called the Kelvin scale. The Kelvin scale goes from 1000, where the light is really warm, all the way up to 10,000, where the light is really cool. But I never walk into a scene, whether it's outside or inside, and look at it and say, well, gee, I think this is 3500 Kelvin. So I'm going to go ahead and set my camera to that white balance so that I get the perfect white balance in my scene. I never do that. In a perfect scenario, I'm going to set this to auto white balance. Maybe I might choose something else if I'm shooting a night scene or something like that. But typically, I'm just going to set this at auto white balance because I'm always going to change the color later anyways. This is the one exception. I usually always try and get this right in camera, but when it comes to color, there are so many variables. I'm really just trying to get it close. I'm not trying to get it perfect. And here's the reason for that. Color evokes moods. Whether it's red making us hungry, yellow making us happy, blue making us cold, all color evokes a mood. And as an artist, you want to channel and take advantage of the way a mood is going to affect the way your viewer feels about a photograph. For example, if I walk into a yellow room, I might feel really happy, probably super happy. But if I walk into a blue room, I'm probably going to feel really cold or really sad. These colors and these emotions are something that you can channel and use to your advantage as an artist, depending on how you want your viewer to feel about your photograph when they look at it. But I still am going to need to know how to fix these white balances and how to manipulate that color. That's what today's video is all about. So let's jump in, show you these four cool tricks on how you can fix white balance inside a Lightroom. So all of the white balance adjustments that you're going to make are going to be here on the right hand side under the basics panel. If you don't see this open, go ahead and click the drop down arrow under the basics panel. And when you do, you'll see that there is a section here with the WB that stands for white balance. So step number one is change auto white balance. Now how you do that is right here, you'll see as shot. This just means that when you took the picture, this is how the white balance looked. But if you open up the drop down menu, you'll see that you have some other options here. And depending on your camera system or the type of file that you actually used, such as whether it was camera raw or a JPEG might dictate what options you see here. So you might see more or you might see less, but regardless, you should see an auto option. So I'm going to just go ahead and click auto and we'll see what that does for us. And it did a fairly decent job. So if you're ever unsure, just make the change from as shot to auto. Now this photograph here was actually captured in a JPEG file. And if you are shooting JPEG files, then you're not going to have all of the other options that I had at my disposal. In fact, if I hit the little drop down arrow next to as shot, you'll see that all I have now is auto and custom. Unlike before where I had tungsten, cloudy, shade, etc. You still have this auto feature or this custom feature, so you can go ahead and try that. But what if you try auto and it's not enough? You don't really like the results that you're getting. I don't want you to feel like you're stuck with this choice because there are three other options that you can try. Option two would be this little eye picker tool here. If we grab this eye picker tool and we head around the image, you'll see that whatever color I'm on, it will show up in the loop here. And what we're looking for is something that is of a 50% gray. Now, if you look at the bottom of this grid view here, where the color picker is, you'll see that you, you see some numbers here. It says R G B. And as I move around, those numbers change right now, you see 75, 77, 78. But as I move around, these numbers either get higher or get smaller based on the type of gray or whatever color you're on. And typically what I'm looking for is a gray that's going to give me some numbers around 50. 
if I can find a gray that's going to get me somewhere close to around 50, say something like this, I will go ahead and click on it and that will go ahead and make the change to the white balance based on that 50% gray. You can always try several different spots by just going back to the eyedropper tool and choosing a different color gray if you didn't like the first option that you got. So don't ever feel like you're stuck with the one you chose. You can try this as many times as you want until you feel like you've gotten the white balance exactly where you want it. Another option is how we handle situations like this where we're outdoors at night shooting a nightscape. Usually it looks like someone urinated all over your picture and so now everything is completely yellow but we know that this is not how the scene looked. So again I have the option to try a couple of varying different things. I can go under here and choose auto white balance and see what that does and if I don't like it then I can go to the eyedropper tool and try and look for 50% gray maybe something on the wheels or something on the building something that's going to get me pretty close and that does a fairly nice job right there I also have the slider here as well so I can take the slider and I can move it if I felt like that's a little bit too blue or a little too cold I can go ahead and move the temperature and give it just a little bit more warmth something else to note is that this slider is very very sensitive so one of the things that I like to do instead of moving the slider manually with my mouse is actually to click on the numbers next to temperature or next to tint and what I can do is use my up and down arrow keys on my keyboard to adjust this ever so slightly once I have it exactly where I want it I'm good to go I just leave it there any one of these techniques will work fabulous when deciding to fix white balance inside of Lightroom. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. If you're not already a subscriber, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Leave us a comment down below. We'd love to hear what you guys think about these videos. And as always, thank you so much for your support. And we'll catch you in the next episode.